The immune response can affect the bacterial composition in the gut, in turn affecting weight gain in mice. Welcome to Microbial Minutes. This is ASN's update on what's hot in the microbial sciences, the Do These Clostridia Make Me Look Fat edition. I'm Julie Wolf, science communication specialist here at ASM, and we'll be answering this question by looking at a paper published in Science. This paper demonstrates that T cell activity influences the gut microbiota composition, which in turn influences lipid metabolism within mice. Now, this group is studying the interaction and the influence of the immune function on the gut microbial composition. This is something that's been shown to affect the gut microbial composition in a number of different studies by this group and others, but often those studies look at inflammation. And in this case, what the group is going to look at is the lack of a particular signaling pathway within T cells, and particularly within a subset of T cells called T follicular helper T, uh, T cells. Uh, and in this subset of T cells, they are going to be lacking the MyD88 signaling pathway. This is a signaling pathway used by many of the immune cells to detect things like pathogen-associated molecular patterns that in turn will activate various response, um, response signaling pathways. And you can see in the photo of the two mice on the right-hand side there, that mice that lack this signaling pathway in their T cells after about six months, which is when this photo was taken, are significantly heavier than their wild-type counterparts. Now, these mice are not only heavier, but they also have higher levels of circulating insulin and a higher incidence of fatty liver disease. So this makes their phenotype similar to people who suffer from metabolic syndrome. Uh, this development of a heavier phenotype is also dependent on the gut microbiota of these different mice, as you can see in the graph shown at the bottom here. The um, MyD, uh, they're called the T MyD mice within the paper, so we'll call them that as well. And you can see that they're represented with those red dots, um, and over time, they gain weight at a higher rate and maintain a higher weight than their wild type counterparts. But when they are treated with antibiotics, their weight gain resembles those of wild types, suggesting that the microbiota are playing a role in this gain of weight. Uh, and so to investigate what microbes might be at play here, the group did some 16S ribosomal uh, RNA gene sequencing. And this demonstrated that not only do the TMID mice have a lower diversity, meaning that they have fewer types of bacteria that are within their um, gut microbiomes, but they also have a lower abundance of the Clostridia taxa. Uh, and so on the, the next slide, we'll see that they showed that this is related to the T cell function. Uh, so they took the um, T cells from either the wild type or the knockout mice, and they put them into TCR beta knockout mice. So they're really not investigating the T cell response here as so much as looking at other immune responses. Uh, you can see that mice who are given these T cells from um, either the wild type or the, the TMID mice maintain that weight differential in figure A, where the knockout mice, the, the mice with the knockout T cells, still gain more weight. Um, and in figure B, what they demonstrate is that this is not this is due to a difference in um, IgA. So uh, the IgA is an immunoglobulin, uh, an antibody that is secreted along the mucosal borders. So think along the entire gastrointestinal tract. And the IgA that is being released by these mice um, is released at different quantities. So the knockout um, T cells. The, excuse me, the mice that are given the knockout T cells don't produce quite as much IgA. And this IgA interacts with the bacteria within the gut at different rates. So in B, they are looking at the interaction of IgA with the bacteria. And the wild type, um, shown in the blue dots, uh, binds to, let's say, a little uh, close to 50% of the bacteria, whereas um, the T my D mice it only, uh, only about 40 or 30% of their bacteria are bound by this IgA. These mice that are given the TMID T cells also have a lower uh, proportion of Clostridiaceae, as you can see in figure E here, uh, where the um, wild type and TMID mice are looked at uh, to, to demonstrate that they have lower Clostridiaceae. And then uh, this correlates, as shown in figure D, with a higher proportion of D sulfovibrionaceae as well. Uh, so the um, what they wanted to do was then figure out why this might uh, lead to the, the weight gain. And they did a little bit of uh, investigation into the host uh, metabolism and looked at where the fatty acids were within these different mice. So uh, in figure L and M over here, they're looking at the, the fatty acids either within the serum 
or within the cecum of these mice. And the fatty acids in the serum were at higher levels uh, within the knockout mice and within the cecum were at lower levels, suggesting that perhaps these um, the, the presence of these different uh, bacteria was facilitating the difference of fatty acids back into the host metabolism where they could be um, metabolized and, and stored as fats, uh, although this needs to be explored just a little bit further for a definitive mechanism. Uh, this was shown in a lovely schematic, which they put into their abstract, uh, as we'll see on the next slide, which shows how the reduced T cell responses um, lead to a change in IgA and the loss of these clostridia, which altogether leads to a phenotype um, within these obese mice that resembles that of metabolic disease. And although we are talking uh, almost exclusively in mice, it's important to note that some of the phenotypes that we're discussing, um, such as a deficiency in IgA uh, production, are also observed in um, obese human adults. Now, this was picked up in a couple of different outlets, including one that we'll highlight from New Atlas, where the senior author, June Round, was quoted as saying, now that we found the minimal bacteria responsible for this slimming effect, we have the potential to really understand what the organisms are doing and whether they have therapeutic value. We'll certainly be following this up on future microbial minutes, so if you're interested in that research, be sure to hit subscribe. I'd like to thank you for listening and thank Ray Ortega for production. I'm Julie Wolf, and I'll be with you next time on Microbial Minutes.